Hi, everyone. I've been doing a ton of reflection the last couple of weeks here and come to some big realizations and wanted to share them with you. And what I came to realize is that over this past year, I've put a ton of focus on vulnerability, sharing my vulnerability, being vulnerable, the things that I struggle with, my imperfections, putting them out into the world. And I didn't know it throughout the whole year, but I kept coming back to vulnerability. And it's been a huge piece in my own personal growth and my own personal healing. And reflecting into it, because I believe that it's coming to an end, I believe that it's time for me to move on to my next phase, which I'm not 100% sure what that is yet. But I wanted to share my findings with all of you so that hopefully you can take something valuable away from it. So reflecting back and my first true kind of what kicked off this journey of, for me in vulnerability, I was reflecting back to the first King of Hearts meeting that I ever went to. And I remember showing up all by myself, knowing that, or at least telling myself that I'm just gonna sit there not say a word, not talk to anybody. And if I hate it, that's okay. And maybe I'll like it by not putting any pressure on it. And it really was eye-opening having these types of conversations with people, you know, talking about the things that you struggle with. And for the first time in my life, realizing that I struggle with a lot of things that other people do too. And before that, there was a ton of shame, a ton of shame in the fact that I believed I was the only person to struggle with these things, that because I struggled with these things that I wasn't good enough, things of that nature. And those coming into my brain and because of the shame, trying to hide them away which caused even more problems. But I remember going back and I don't remember specifically what it was that I shared. And knowing that it's, you know, seems so insignificant now with, you know, the things that I've shared both in private and public. But I remember the physiological response. I remember, you know, sweating, my, my heart feeling like it's gonna pound out of my chest. Um, you know, having trouble breathing, feeling like I'm hyperventilating and the complete and utter release as soon as I shared, as soon as I shared in the world didn't end because in my mind, I had always catastrophized being vulnerable. A lot of people knew this about me. They would reject me. They wouldn't talk to me anymore. They wouldn't like me and such a freeing and almost addictive feeling of sharing that vulnerability, of being vulnerable, being seen, being heard. And why that was starting to come up was because I'd say about a month ago now, I finally stood up in front of um, the men in my men's group and told them every single deepest, darkest secret that I have because I wanted to be fully seen. I didn't want to hold anything in anymore. I didn't want to keep it in the dark. And I remember almost being disappointed at the, res the response within myself, within my body of these are things that I've held for years and the things that I hold the most shame around in my entire life. And yet the response was not even close to being comparable to that first time of opening up. And realizing and looking back that the more I opened up, the easier it became which is something that I'm so thankful for. And at the same time shows me that it's time to shift my focus in my growth. Why it was coming up in, you know, specifically vulnerability for me was I'd always battled with this idea of perfection. The idea that I had to be perfect to be deserving of attention, to be deserving of love even that if I wasn't perfect, if I didn't always agree with people, do whatever they wanted me to do, they would cast me off and I would have nobody. And those feelings of loneliness, I realized I've had for a very, very long time. And doing anything to hold on to that connection and not wanting to screw it up or the, perce the perception of screwing it up by not being perfect. The other big thing that it helped me with was healing a lot of those old wounds and specifically a lot of childhood wounds, you know, going back in and actually opening up about these topics, opening up about the things that I struggle with and 
that led to challenging some of these ideas that I had hold in my brain. These ideas that I realized were formed a lot of times as a child, you know, even in elementary school, junior high. And because they were formed so early, I had taken them as truths, taken them to be 100% true. And reflecting back on them, realizing a lot of them are opinions. And reflecting back on those experiences that I pulled those truths from, now I come to different conclusions. So challenging those beliefs, challenging what I actually believe, what has changed and what is just a complete story that I've told myself for a very long time has led to extreme growth and has allowed me to reimagine so many aspects of my life. I truly believe doing that this work, it seems from the outside looking in like steps backwards of specifically professionally taking steps backwards to work on myself to, you know, kind of explore, explore what I like doing, explore, you know, why I do the things that I do. And I truly believe, even though it was a step back, I think that it's going to serve me so much in the future. And I was having these conversations with a couple of different people over the last couple months of the hardest thing about this kind of work is one, it's slow. It takes a long time. There's no fast tracking it. You're not just gonna wake up one day and then things are 100% changed. There's so many years of peeling back layers and layers to get to the root problems to once you've identified those issues uh, to reimagine them. And the other aspect of it is it's fucking hard. <laughs> and I tell people that a lot where it's tough to dig up these old wounds. It's tough to reimagine them. It's tough to look at relationships in your life and see what is important, what's not important, to reimagine where you want to go with your life trajectory. And that's why I think a lot of people can't, not can't, are not willing to do the work because it's so hard. It takes so long and the steps are so incremental. And it's not until you look back at where you used to be that you can see the changes. Day to day, it can be very hard. And I fought against that for a long time as well with people telling me how much I've grown over the last little while. And me not seeing it, me not being able to accept that. And it's taken still a lot of work and I'm still working on that part. But I feel like I am going from, I like to think of it as specifically a lot of negative thoughts about myself and trying to get to neutral. And I think that is what I've been doing with vulnerability these past, um, you know, call it year. Now, realizing once I shared those deepest, darkest secrets and not having the response that I was expecting for one, but also just feeling inside almost an inner peace and although I've not conquered vulnerability by any means, I could see that it was time for me to shift to something else, that this could no longer be my main focus if I wanted to continue seeing the growth that I would like. And that's caused a lot of uncertainty for me for the last little bit, where I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that next step is. I'm not sure what I should be doing or what I should be focusing on. And it did lead to, um, you know, a lot of, not stress, but um, yeah, almost annoyance. Like, okay, just show me what the next thing is so I can start on it. I've really tried sitting with it and I've had a bunch of different conversations with different people trying to get different perspectives and really reflecting on it afterwards as well. And what, what I've kind of come down to is I spent a lot of this last year focusing on the past of my past experiences, my past programming, uh, healing those old wounds like I talked about. And I think it's now time for me to focus on the now and the future of trying to work towards that, you know, call it the best version of myself, the version of myself that I would like to be. And in doing that, one of the big areas that has come up is wanting to push myself and push myself in a different way. Because as I was looking back on it, I realized I've always pushed myself however 
it's been very easy to find the motivation because the motivation was to impress other people, to impress somebody. And now trying to find that motivation for myself is something that I've struggled with. It's something that I struggled with for a long time, but feeling like I'm turning the corner now I'm feeling that urge to see how much I can push myself and doing it for me, using that intrinsic motivation. What am I capable of when I'm not trying to do it for other people? And so really exploring what my boundaries are, what I can, you know, how hard I can push, what things I'm capable of. The other big thing for me is I've realized I have a lot of call them emotional danger responses where my body, everything in my body is triggering a fight, flight, or freeze um, response from certain activities that scared the living shit out of me, to be honest. And so because of that, I've stayed away from them. And why I say emotional danger is because a lot of times those responses are very helpful and we need to listen to them when there is actual danger right? They help keep us safe. They help keep, make sure that we survive. However, you know, things like singing karaoke, there's no real danger there. <laughs> the worst case scenario is not that bad. Things like that, that I've always shied away from because there's that emotional fear, that emotional fear, typically of being seen of, um, again, that imperfection coming out whatever it might be, um, you know, feeling not good enough to do whatever it might be. And so I think I really want to start challenging those things, doing the things that make me uncomfortable. Um, even stuff like this, or just talking directly into a camera makes me wildly uncomfortable. However, I want to push myself to see what I'm capable of and to see what I actually like, because what I've come to realize is, and question is how many things am, do I actually enjoy doing, but I've never tried doing them before because of that fear. And so the word that comes to mind for me is exploration for this next phase, exploring my boundaries, what I'm capable of, exploring the things that I like and I don't like, and really really pushing myself and trying to figure it out. So I would love to hear any feedback that you guys have, if this resonates at all, and hopefully it's helpful to even one person. Um, thank you all. And I appreciate all of you.